into the Magnathia build of ours. This is a Burrows and Badgers Benfliot build. Yes indeed, some people have been waiting quite some time for this. If you can cast your mind back to January, you'll remember that I very ambitiously, maybe over ambitiously, set out to make a set of buildings for Burrows and Badgers for my Benfliot village in the marsh kind of setting. Um, and they were pretty cool, I was very pleased with them. I was setting out to build like three, well they weren't really three buildings because one of them was like three in one. So there was like five buildings or so, which was a very, very ambitious plan. Some of them are here. Hang on. <coughs> Remember this? Marshy building. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. I like it, it's very happy with that. That was a single one. Um, then there was one that had like three houses in one. And, um, and also, you might remember that I set out with every intention to build a lighthouse. Yes, uh, for the uh, Puffin dude, the the mayor of Benfield. Um However, it got kind of complicated, it found way too complicated. The other builds were very complicated uh, and I kind of bottled it in the end and I didn't build the lighthouse. In fact, the lighthouse build got this far. Here it is, <laughs> that's as far as I got. Um, so this video is going to feature the rest of building uh, the lighthouse. In fact, what it's going to do first of all, after I've sat here and scratched my head a little bit, because my thing is with this model is it's, I've kept saying over and over again, I want this to be a whimsical fantasy model. Problem with that is I have no idea what that means. Um, all I know is I don't want this to look like a regular lighthouse, you know, kind of like round up, red and white stripes, light on the top, flash. Needs to be a bit more fancy than that. Uh, here's the original drawing I did for it. And it might end up like that, uh, I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, so we'll get to that in a minute. What I do know is that uh, the first part of this video I made a couple of three months ago now because it will be just the bits I've taken out of the other videos putting together of making the islands. There shouldn't be much, it's only making the base. It's a hardball base with a, a XPS foam island on it cut out with a bit of wood support and stuff. So the first bit of this video will get you up to speed, then we'll be at this point where we're here. Well, I don't know what to do next. Mm. So there will be some beard stroking. That is, of course, the point of having a great big long beard like this, so you can sit there and stroke it and consider. Um, and I'll be doing a lot of that while you're watching the first bit. Because I have added the higher level, this second layer of XPS foam here. Um, it is going to cause me a few problems with how big the lowest, the first floor that the lighthouse is going to be. Uh, and I've come to terms with the fact that some of it might overhang the edge of the island, which is cool because I want it to be a fairly rickety structure. But what it will do is give me extra height on the model. And one of the things is I want this to be um, 8, 10 inches or so tall, taller than anything else in the village. Or if I use it out in the marsh, that kind of thing would be quite cool. So um, I can't do anything else with that at the minute. I've, I've done all the stone texture. I've done the stone, the bricks. Now the, the, the kind of like the, the stone stairs going down into the water. But this now has to fully go off. It's going to be well, it's nearly midnight now. It's, this is going to be won't be dry and usable till tomorrow. And then I can take my hot wand and carve that down. Put more brickwork in here to support the chimney and then I'll be able to get on with making the lighthouse tower. Come this is the lighthouse uh, base now. Um, steps and a little stone quayside and a little bit of rock sticking up out of the marsh, not much. Uh, chimney support cutting this end here, I don't know how well we can see that there, because it's black on black, it's like um, Something from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And I'm going to have to actually build out on this. I'm dumping the idea of the stone lower floor for this building because apart from anything else, there's not enough to support it over here. The profile of this is very weird shape, so it's going to have to have a square floor, which is cool because it will have sticky out supports out coming out from the rock made of wood holding up the floor um bracing it which is gonna be great because that's gonna become a feature of some other models that i make later this year so it'll be give me a chance to try that out um so first floor and now i need to get on with that so it's actually starting to build the buildings now the islands are coming on quite nicely so this is the um 
poorer end of town and then the lighthouse out in the swamp on the edge of town getting made which is going to be quite cool it's going to give me more options while i'm building and what I might now what i've done is i like this i've i've cut a floor with um slopey off bit because that's going to go here at the top of this staircase and so the tail starts to hang over the edge of the rock a little bit and it certainly does back here there's loads of it hanging over i'm making sure there's plenty of room here that i can going to build chimney up up here um but i want a, a, a joist to hold up the this corner of the building here so i've taken this um Square section, what's that? That's got to be 10 mils. Yeah, 10 mil square section. Carved it down a little bit. Now, the cool thing is, is what I've done is I've cut into the styrene so it'll bed in firmly and I'm trying to level it off so I'll end up with a joist coming out of the rock, holding up the corner of the building. And what I'm then going to do is I'm probably going to backfill this with filler uh, to hold it all in place and to fill in the rock that I've carved out because i've completely carved out um this bit of rock here which i totally didn't need to is totally in the wrong place oops so i've worked this uh joist back further and further into the rock face and now i'm going to fill that up with filler there uh, and i think that worked quite nicely because then i'll get this kind of like rock that's been uh the, the wooden joist has been rammed down cut into they've chipped away at the rock got this wooden joist in there and that's supporting the corner of the lighthouse the lighthouse is going to be the wackiest build, I think, in Benfleet. Um, sometimes my, my fantasy builds, I think, are quite sensible and grown up and look almost kind of realistic. And I'm, I'm hoping that this uh, lighthouse is going to have a little bit more whimsy. Don't know. But I'm, so I'm starting off with this kind of like floor that doesn't fit and this joist. That's a good place to start. Then I'm going to build the first floor, which is going to need um, uprights in the corners and uh, walls. With the old window and bits and pieces put in it, we'll see how we go. So yeah, this is this is the bit this is exciting one. I probably could have made just this lighthouse in its own video in its own right. Um but uh yeah, you never know. I might shoot it all over again. <laughs> right, uh, so that's uh gorilla wood glue in there. And um this isn't stuck on the floor, I haven't stuck on. Uh the floor's not stuck on, it's just placed on top of the joist so it's going to hold it in place now uh, taking a heavy weight a weight heavier that's heavy enough like this classy back to the future flux capacity mug that i got for christmas that's going to sit there Whoop. hold that in place overnight and then when that's glued in place and that'll be tomorrow um i'll be able to get some of my polyfiller to fill in around there around that bit of rock face and then I'll have that joist coming right out of the rock it's gonna look really cool um, and that'll be nice good stuff I need to start thinking about what the rest is gonna look like um, which way the boards are gonna go more than anything else uh, do they go shiplap which is very common uh, on old traditional buildings in this neck of the woods uh, or whether they go upright doesn't make a great deal of difference which way they go um, ship lap horizontal planking might be better uh and will look different to a lot of the other buildings that i made where i'm sure they've got vertical planks well let's go and look at some of the other binfield buildings because i'd like to make something that's different um and this yeah i want it to be different because it's going to be a little bit away from the village maybe or out sometimes i can use it out in the marsh that kind of thing but a bit more whimsy on this model it's good Oh, sorry for the water on this. I'm using multi-purpose polyfiller. I'm applying it thick and then using a paintbrush uh, with uh, to water it down and to smooth it out to put all the water around the base of my little islands. I'll do the same with all three and then that will um, paint up nicely. I'll, uh, when it's dry, prime it with Mod Podge and black acrylic like I did the actual model. And then that way there it will seal it nicely, give me a decent surface to paint. Easy peasy. And there we go, look, coming up nice.
Okay, so now we're up to speed. We've got as far as this. This is where I'm at. It's black, it's primed, it's sealed. Got a stone key here for bringing boats alongside to resupply. Um, and uh, then we've got the what's left of the island. I have cut out a wooden floor, which is to sit here and be supported uh, by this one beam that's sticking out that we've looked at already. Um, and I've got the base of a chimney here. Now I've got no idea what else I'm going to do. Uh, however, I have one thought, and that is what I need to do is to build the rest of the fireplace. Nothing says whimsical, I think, more than a wibbly-wobbly chimney. Um, so that's what I'm going to do to start off with. I'm going to make a wibbly-wobbly chimney. Well, not that wibbly-wobbly, but not a straight-up thing. It might have a bit of a bend to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, XPS foam. 25mm XPS foam, that's what this is. Uh, I'm going to cut out, and it's going to go sit here on top of this part of the chimney here anyway. Look, I've started a chimney. It's coming out of the water. Um, and although, because I want this, as I keep saying, using this word whimsical, I'm not just going to cut out a straight column an inch wide. I think that's about an inch across. Just about. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a bit wider, uh, and then I'm going to freehand a chimney into it it might start out the bottom an inch and go a bit wobbly and then get a bit thinner at the top and that will make a more interesting shape it will also be a right royal pain in the ass to build a wall around but you know hey ho them's the brakes and all that kind of thing so that's what i'm going to do first um when i've got the chimney in place i'll then have an idea of what the rest of the building's going to look like i think i'm going to make the chimney probably eight inches tall um the lighthouse will probably be taller than that but uh, that would be a good kind of place to start, I think. Yeah, let's do that and see what that looks like. This model is already, I am predicting, going to be a pain in the backside to store as well. Well, that would probably just lie over on this side. Right, so that's the first thing. Polystyrene. <sighs> XPS. Uh, we're going to cut it out. We're going to texture it with the tin foil method. Um, I'll talk about that in a second and uh, then we're going to draw on the stones and um, that kind of thing. Okay, let's do it. Right, there's my chimney stack uh, cut out and uh, now I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure an inch at the bottom because I want the chimney to be an inch wide um, to fit on the what I've already got in place. But then all I'm doing is I'm going to draw and draw lines in, as you can see, without a ruler. Uh, and have the chimney a bit more wobbly. Thank you so fucking much. As you can see, I'm, can you see that? I'm drawing in these lines here, so the chimney's gonna be a bit more wobbly. Um, I'm mad hoping, I don't know. Does that add whimsy? I don't know. Well, okay, so let's be, be chimney drawn in. I don't know if this is gonna make this whimsical at all. I don't know if that's the right phrase. I'm gonna cut this out and then I'm gonna chamfer it down a little bit so it's still a bit more square towards the top, otherwise I'm gonna have a real rectangular thing. Um, and then uh, let's see what that looks like. Well, I don't know if this is a good idea or not. Uh, but, you know, this is what the whole point of this particular model is. Oh, a bit of fun. Oh, then, yeah, then we do the weathering and, and the making of that kind of thing. So let's let's cut it out. I'm going to use a Stanley knife just to cut down these lines. Uh, I might have to get a scalpel on it. But, yeah, brand new Stanley knife blade. Of course, the Stanley knife blade ain't going to be thick enough to go all the way through the polystyrene in one go. All right, what do we reckon? Do we reckon whimsy? <laughs> I don't know yet, but uh, uh, that's going to be my chimney standing there like that now. So that'll be the chimney there. I could cut a small fireplace into that. On the ground floor, and then on the uh, upper floor as well. We'll see how we go. Um, hmm. Yes.
What I'll do is I'll cut a bit out so the floorboards go into it and then the fire sits in it. I'll sand this down a little and then I'm going to tin foil it. What do you mean you don't know what tin foiling means? Well, that's very simple. I take a ball of tin foil and I roll all over it to give it a texture, get rid of this smooth edge, and then I'm going to draw stonework into it with a biro. Right, now, there will be some people who haven't seen one of my videos before, uh, maybe not seen me work with XPS Foam. So for those people, here we go. This is a, an oblong now, it looks like an owl pellet of tin foil. I've used it quite a lot. This is my XPS Foam. And all I'm gonna do to give it a little bit of extra texture, um, cause it's all sanded now, I've got rid of lots of the cuts and stuff, to give it extra texture to make it more interesting to paint. Uh, a little bit more realistic. I'm just rolling the f all over the foam with the tin foil. That compresses the foam, it gives it a rough surface. And then when I draw, here we go, look, you can see the difference between smooth here and the, what, and the uh, tin foil treatment. Um, you can either roll it or smush it on. Either way around it works quite well. Apart from anything else, when the model's ready to paint and we seal it, the island bit is already sealed. It's been sealed with Mod Podge and black acrylic paint. What it does is it gives you a much nicer, more interesting texture on the front of your rocks and your brickwork and that kind of thing. It's the next job after I've textured all of this is going to be a draw. Cut out the fireplaces and draw in the stonework that it's made from. It's a bit hard on your hands. But uh those steps, the little techniques that just give you that extra edge when you're making the model, that's not bad. Pretty much all over that there now. Right, okay, let's find a biro now, draw in the stones, work out where my fireplace is gonna go. So here's the chimney then. Now you can see all the stonework drawn in. And I've cut two fireplaces in so far. Probably only going to have those two. Um, and the interesting thing was, by accident, oops, I cut the wrong way. It was going to go this way. Another chimney, the fireplace in here, but I cut the fireplace in the wrong place. So now, actually, it's still an inch wide, uh, and all the whimsical bit goes up the back, which is probably, actually, probably quite a good accident to happen because uh, it means that I shouldn't have too much problem, he says, hopefully fitting walls around it. We'll see how we go. So uh, this is gonna go uh, on the back of the island. Let's just come up again. It's gonna go on here now. Um, I've cut out a bit of fireplace space so that then sits on this uh, floorboard. So I can stick that on. And what I'm probably gonna do is use some um, barbecue skewers. Whoops to hold it in place because you see if I glue it and let go of it like that it's just going to fall over. So I'll use some barbecue skewers to give it some extra uh, strength in the join between the island and the chimney and that will all help, help hold that in place. Then I can get on adding uh, the walls. Now in the original picture the ground floor, this bit here, was going to be in stone but as I've got a wooden uh, set of floor and all, the wooden floor is being held up over here by this wooden joist. It seems a bit weird to have stone walls on top of that. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna make the entire uh, lighthouse, uh, with the exception of the chimney, of course, out of uh, wood, which should actually, hopefully, uh, speed up the process, maybe, possibly. So door here into the room on the ground floor. Um, it's a puffins 
uh, lighter house and they're thin, they're going to have a ladder up the side, but the puffin, I imagine, could just flap his wings up from level to level or go out. I'm not putting in a tight staircase in this. That will make the whole model impossible. As it is, let's see if I can find a big beast. Well, this is a large figure I'm painting for B&B &B at the moment. And the puffin's on a big base like that. Um, 40 millimeter base is going to fill up most of the uh, ground floor. So I think what I'm actually going to do is on the first floor where we're talking, here's the whimsy on the first floor. I think I'm going to have it bigger and then go thinner again on the next floor up as it goes up towards a, a lighthousey bit. And the chimney then is going to be below probably the, the top layer. But that's all right. Doesn't actually have to work. I mean. <sighs> This is fantasy, so it doesn't matter too much if it, it isn't kind of very realistic because uh, it's going to be a bit odd. But I'm going to have, a, a, I think, the first floor is going to look different to what it does in the original picture because I want the first floor to have enough space for there to be some figure interaction and the odd bit of furniture, that kind of thing. Because there ain't going to be much room down here. This is going to be the supply room, I reckon. There'll be a couple of barrels and a, st and a set of ladders, and that'll be it. Right, good. Okay, so what do we need to do? Fine glue, fine barbecue skewers, stick that on there, stick on floorboards, uh, draw, oh, I've, look, I've even drawn floorboards on underneath. In case you get underneath it, that's good. Then we can get on making the walls for this thing. Timber! Now, I'm not going to uh, refer to the original drawings of this model anymore. I'm going to just go with what kind of happens. I'm going to make it entirely out of balsa. A couple of reasons for that. A, it works better in my mind. I like to have the cool wooden structure out in the marshes. And B, um, it can all be thinner. I'll get more room inside. So we're going to go, like I said, my first idea, which is going to be um, small tower room at the base here. I've got my fireplace cut in here, so I need a second um, floor first floor properly uh, and that's going to be wider so it can be more interesting from a figure point of view. It'll either be a small tower room and then with a balcony around the outside um, but I might leave that for upper level so this, this first floor here is going to be quite a wide room that's the living quarters then we'll go up from there so I'm cutting balsa uh, um, beams like this these are roughly what's that about five mils square to form corners to stick those on then i'm going to ship lap or put bolts around the outside uh to this first floor level of course me being me i want the whole thing to come apart be able to put figures inside it so i've got to figure that out as well so i'm going to definitely build this one floor at a time let's see how that works i want the front door here i want a window in at least two of the other uh room i probably not don't need two downstairs but certainly up here you need more windows i like the idea of the lighthouse keeper being able to look out of all sides of the lighthouse right that's what we're going to do i have the advantage in some places okay Okay, so the walls are going on this ground floor, um, making them out of thin bolter and upright. We can see that there, look. Um, and what I've decided I'm going to do is I'm going to put a section with a door in here and another wall bit in here. That's going in there like that. Um, and then this end section over here, this one. I'm not going to be sticking in. I'm going to be putting that in there so I can drop that in and drop that out because I think, although I want access to this model, I don't want to have to take the roof off. It'll be more easier, better for the model if the um, first floor is permanently stuck on. So I'm going to have it so I can pull out one wall, get into the side of the model rather than pull the roof off. Um, that's the plan. So I've got to make a door section now. Stick with that in, and I've got to just trim this down a little bit. What's going on? So first ground floor, easy peasy, fairly regular. Then we've got to get, like I said, all whimsical with the first floor. Make that a little bit more playable, actually, apart from the you know, bigger space, that kind of thing. Um, we'll get to that when this bit is done. Uh, 
weird shape because of the rock and how it's carved out and the steps up to it. Front door that comes out, but I can also take out this whole side panel which just slots in, and especially when the first floor is stuck on it, that'll fit in nice and tight. Goes on the back there. It gives it a decent amount of room for the odd bit of kit stashed in there, or the odd figure, but there's not a great deal of room in their room, even if it was square, for fights or characters, that kind of thing. So I want to make the first floor bigger. And this is where the whimsy happens, people. I've decided I think I'm going to go for um, a hexagonal room above. A regular hexagon sitting on the top. I've got to work it out. I've, I've cut out two bits of balsa that make a regular hexagon, roughly. Um, sides of three inches. So I'm just going to work out where I'm going to place that now. Obviously, I'll have to cut in a bit that goes around the chimney, which is fine, the chimney will go through part of it. So I'm wondering whether I should bring it over here so most of it's kind of like hanging over the door and that kind of thing. I don't mind, I don't mind if this model isn't kind of architecturally a sound, brilliant plan. I just want it to look cool. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I might do there. Stick that over that. Um, well, it might be quite neat if I go that way. Try and follow that angle. So there's quite a lot of. Although well, that will be a right pain in the bum fitting that into it. Mm. Harumph. This is why I want to stick it on and make it permanent as well, rather than. Uh, having it lift offable because it'll be really really fiddly getting it on and off around the chimney it'll be much better if it's just fitted on and it fits which I think is what I'm going to do I quite like that angle though there though because then that angle here will complement the angle of the, the way the doorway goes over there um, so I'm going to have a fiddle with that and see what I can do so this is going to be fiddly. What I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to try and cut out a square out of this, hex this half a hexagon. Uh, and then I'm going to keep bits of that and fit it best back in around the chimney best I can, I think. I hope this works, otherwise I'm going to have to cut out another bloody hexagon. Here we go. Hang in there, people, and see what happens. carefully because I don't want to split any of the extra bits of bolts of it. Right. There's a square coming out. That then fits around there like that. Right, that's not bad. Well that if I stick that like that I reckon I can cut out a few bits of bolter, stick them in and fudge them around the fireplace, around the chimney. That ain't bad and that's going to give me this interesting shape that I'm after for this building so let's do that yeah and then that puts this bit of the chimney inside the building which is quite nice uh, and then I, I'll work up to the, the next floor but I think I'll then take the chimney back outside for the next part hmm. cool okay so here I've cut in a trap door uh, not it's going to be openable, but it's going to be in there. That's going to sit over uh, the rafters, uh, roughly where a ladder could come up from uh, the lower level. Um, it's going to give this yeah this room a bit of a weirdness look, but yeah, it's going to be cool. Uh, so yeah, from that point of view, uh, we are making progress. I think I think we're making progress. Now to stick on the floors and to um, uh, 
to fill in around the chimney. Right, so super glued on all these rafters around here, using super glue for this corner to be more precise. And down the side here, you want whimsy, Melvin Farmers? I'll give you flipping whimsy. There we go, hexagonal floor stuck in place. Now, well, the next thing I think I'm going to have to do is put some wooden supports up in different places to hold up the roof, hold up this floor, because it's not in a particularly great structural position. And I need to fill in around that chimney work as well. I've kept the piece of wood that I cut out that I can cut bits to fit. I hope. We'll see how we can make that work. It's going to be cool. Nothing about this model is going to end up being square now. It's quite neat. Obviously, this is a hexagon, so that ain't going to be square. But you know what I mean. Need to go and find the puffing figure, get him to have a look, see what he thinks. Walls next, and then some kind of ceiling, roof. We'll use a hexagon for the top of the roof, I think, and that will then give me shape up for the rest of the tower. All right, so I've cut six two-inch tall, three-inch wide panels that I've put uh, planks drawn into, which are gonna make the first floor walls. Apart from the wall that's behind the chimney, each wall on the first floor has got a window cut into it. But I've cut them all at different kind of like sizes because I just think they'll be more interesting to look at, to be honest. Um, that's going to go around there and they're going to work out how the roof works. So uh, yeah, this is getting a bit more fantasy and a bit more creative, a bit less run of the mill. Apart from anything else, the chimney and the position of it in the building means that the roof is going to be weird. I've got an idea for that though, so we'll see how we go there. So I'm just going to draw into the um, wood here, more wood kind of grain effects to make it better for painting, and then I'm going to stick all these on. Right, and here is my hexagonal roofing place. A nice little fireplace, a nice little trap door. Now we're going to work out how the roof is going to work. Now, what I'm planning on doing is this. I've had these for donkey shears. These are a bunch of hexagonal fraction dominoes that I used to use when I was teaching, but they are perfectly regular hexagons. And I'm thinking of using this as a template and not having a roof where all the roof panels are exactly the same I'm going to offset it so it sits around the chimney thus um, and then that way there I can build my roof around it and then I'm going to make the back section of roof over here permanent and then the front section of roof lift offable then we've got a flat platform here which is going to build a mast kind of thing out of for my extra height for my lighthouse to go on which will have a ladder going up to the beacon on the top yeah, that's what we're going to do. See how that works out. I'm going to cut out first of all a hexagon this size out of boxwood and a bunch of beams, rafters that are going to hold it up and support it from different points of the roof. I think. <laughs> See how we go. We're going in. So I've got three struts in place. This one's not glued in yet, um, which is enough to get my top of my roof. I'm going to put roof panels in around three sides, I think. They're going to be completely solid um, to, uh, uh, and then allow access in through this side here and this side here into the model itself. But this back bit around the fire, around the chimney is going to be way too fiddly to have it removable. So I'll build all of that um, roof in place. I'm going to tile it. Uh, I'm going to use laser cut tiles that are kind of like fish scaly kind of shaped tiles, which will be quite cool. Um, so I need to crack over the rest of this roof and then work out where we're going from there. Is it looking whimsical enough for you? Are we looking fantasy enough for you? 
I think it's gonna. Right, so it's good fun actually because all I'm doing is making this up as I'm going along. And yeah, I know for a fact that it doesn't look anything like my original drawing, but actually I think it will be far more satisfying build uh, when it's done than if I'd made just what was in that original drawing. So from that point of view, it's pretty cool. I'm going to put another beam in here. Certainly another one over the back. Uh, but I'm going to leave this bit open, I think, um, because otherwise you just won't be able to get figures inside it. And then the whole point is being able to get figures inside it. So. Uh, but it's going to be a nice tall room that it should be able to get largish models inside which is pretty cool um, although I haven't figured out a way of how they get out onto the next bit I might just put a trap door up here or in one of these um, roof panels I might have a dormer doorway and staircase out I think that actually might be the easiest solution that would look pretty neat as well pretty kind of odd weird and stormy and having to go outside in a storm to light the beacon out and up and, and yeah that's cool kind of thing well see how it works out i've got to do all the trim around the windows yeah but ah. right so this is the roof going on what i'm doing is cutting out bits of cardboard and putting it on place here um it doesn't matter if they're not exact fits because they're going to get covered with uh, roof tiles the only bit that needs to be a bit more precise is this bit here at the front where we're going to be able to put figures in but i'm not going to work that bit out yet um, uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that, um, although that's going to need yeah, a bit of working. Uh, but I could tell the rest of the roof, which is all pretty good. And I've cut a hole out here, uh, which is going to give me a platform and a doorway that uh, it means that the, the lighthouse keeper can get out of his main room onto a platform and then up onto the roof and I'm thinking of using this which is uh, Mars looking stuff stuff covered in rope from an aquarium toy actually to go on here um, to provide me with the tower up to the beacon I can't tell how tall it needs to be though it's probably too big probably only needs to be how big is that about four inches higher and that will make the whole structure over 12 inches tall, which is quite cool. So I think that's probably what we're going to go for here. Right, okay, so I'm starting to work on the roof now. Um, this bit has got to be removable. I haven't worked that out yet, but I have put four bits of cardboard on the other sides, and I've started to add tiling. Um, kind of fish scale shaped tiles. Uh, packets of laser cut fish shaped tiles, uh, fish scale tiles from war bases, um, like the other tiles that I used on the uh, Red Bull Abbey build and all the rest of it, but different shape, they're coming out quite nice, so I'm doing a alternate panel, so I've done this one, fiddly diddly one around the window, and the door hatchway, so I've got to do now the one around the chimney, um, next, um, when they match up it's going to be awkward, but I'm going to put lead strips down there. To cover that over those bend those joints over, but they're really really easy to work with. Um, there's a strip. I pretty much just kind of measure it across roughly, work out how many are going to need. Cut that. So that's going to sit across the bottom there. I run a bead of glue, all purpose adhesive here, across the bottom, where that's going to go. Take a strip of tiles, stick it on. The bits are going to overhang the sides, I'm going to, when they're completely secure and dried on, I'll take clip of those and clip them off. So then I need some more some more strips of for roof this size I don't think I'm going to use one whole sheet of these which is really good um, and uh, actually for rectangular tiles it's a very lazy option because frankly you can cut them out but for interesting shaped tiles um, like the, the tiles on the roofs in 
The Hobbit in Lake Town. I like the idea of having fish scale shaped in Benfleet. So, cut that there. So, hand cutting tiles, this shape would take forever and a day. So, being able to conveniently buy wall bases ones means that I'll get a great looking roof for not very much expense and also not very much time which is absolutely key when you're doing this kind of thing and um, it's going to look cracking now of course this positioning of the uh, top hexagon means that each individual roof panel is different um, because they're all different shapes because it's not sitting central which means each roof panel has been awkward to work out and shape and cut but again I think that's going to really help to add to the quirky fancy here comes that word again whimsical look of this building I hope and that's my plan but you can see how quickly you start to build up a nice looking set of tiles with these I just couldn't achieve this kind of shape and this kind of effect easily um, hand cutting them so this is a brilliant brilliant solution and they really aren't very expensive wallbases.co.uk I think it is there'll be a link down below and um, I thoroughly recommend these make this an interesting roof again because of course most of the roofs in Benfleet are thatched so uh, this is going to be an interesting roof in comparison to all the others set it out amongst the others and that's quite important tight is also going to do that as well by the time the um, crow's nest car area the lighthouse light beacon platform is on it's more well over 12 inches tall which is quite quite different to a lot of my other B&B &B stuff and this of course is now the awkward bit because I've got to kind of cut the tiles in to go around the chimney no, the chimney's not primed either so I've got to be really careful with the glue because the glue will melt the chimney um, this side, easy, this side not so much but it is the kind of thing that will make it look really nice and, uh, bring the chimney into building part of the model seal up the roof and make it make sense so um, yeah, very cool well, let's keep going and see what it looks like now I'm going to do this panel and then I'm going to work out what the uh, um, other two bits of roof look like. I want them to be one piece that I can lift out in one go um, to make ease of access to get figures into the actually into the building. In there, down there, there's enough room for several models in there. It's the kind of thing that I would have been tempted to fill it with furniture and stuff, but the problem with that is that then you can't get models of it. Okay, so now I've got bits down here that need trimming off here and here, and I've gone around this side, and exactly the same here. This is going to be a very, very effective looking roof. Uh, I've got to work out this bit of roof here now, but uh, you know what? I could do that tomorrow. Night time for bed. Coming on though. The whole thing is looking very, very promising. I'm happy with this. Daft enough, fancy enough, whimsical enough. Yes, sir, e Bob. This is a crow's nest, and I thought that was quite cool, but then I decided I'd go one better, and now I've added this as well. So, two layers. So, now we're going to have handrails here, and then I've got handrails on this one, and then here as well. Um, this is designed so it takes out, so I can store it easy. Um, but yeah, there's just slots in there which is quite neat. Quite nice. And um, what I haven't done is attached ladders to any of it yet. I'm not quite sure I'm going to do that. Uh, might just abstract the ladders, although there could be a ladder from here to here easily enough. Right, so this area is now the problem area, but I have made this, which is going to sit in there I need to put the tiles on around here and then lead line across the top two separate pieces of cardboard and three struts 
uh, cut with 120 degree angles uh, to match. This is sitting, and then it will sit under the lead lining, so I'll be able to pick it out. Nice and easy. And the only other thing I need to do really is put some frames in these windows. And this um, model will actually, the construction wise, will be done. Just need priming and painting. So I'm going to get on with putting this roof on, finish off the trim to neaten it all up. Nearly there. It's turned out quicker than I thought it would. Okay, black primed with Mod Podge and black primer. Now we're going to have to paint this. Fortunately, it comes apart in several sections, so we're going to be painting different bits. We're going to paint it up here first. We're going to take this off. We can take out the roof, paint the inside, paint on stone, do all the water work. It's a lot of painting to do, but I hope you like it. Is there enough whimsy for you? That's the question. Is it fantasy enough? I think it kind of is, uh, especially by the time I had a paint job to it. Um, I'm going to probably go with black weatherboarding, like the uh, other buildings in the town, but um, this tile roof can be kind of blues, I think, fish scaly kind of colours. Uh, rocks, loads of woodwork. Let's crack on. Right, most of the paintwork has been done now. I've done some smeary water. Uh, the things I've still got left to do, I suppose, is uh, add some weather in, and I, I want to add some uh, earth, mud, and plant life and, and stuff down here. Uh, and I need to gloss, mod podge the water um, so it matches all the other um, waters that I've done. But I'm pretty pleased with this on the whole. And the other thing I've got to do is find the Beacon, oh there it is, I just found it, hurrah, stop, <laughs> I made this years ago for a lighthouse and I'm going to recycle it, look at that, check it out, yeah, go me. Okay, we're now adding flock and plant life and the like, which is really helping bring the, the base out, making it a bit, adding to that swampy kind of thing, taking away some of the hard edges of all the stone, um, which is quite cool, so quite a lot of flock around the back and up the chimney, I need to add some. Uh, on the roof, on the chimney at the top as well. That's quite neat. So, but that's what's helping to do is to take away the, the drab harshness of all the black, uh, which is quite cool. So, from that point of view, coming on nicely. I'm going to put a couple of kind of like scrubby bushes down here as well, I think, which will help blend it in with all the other marsh kind of scenery. But I'm really pleased. I've also, I've also been messing around with that beacon that I've had for donkey's years that I've kind of like made and found. Um, I'm taking it apart and I need to repaint all the the wood in it but what I have done is I've now dropped uh, an LED holder on the inside of it with which I can place a flickering yellow LED in it and then I've got a flame covering that could go on the top check it out a flickering flaming beacon to go on the top of my lighthouse Oh yes, I'm quite chuffed with that everybody, even though I do say so myself. Just happen to have all this gear kind of lying around. Um, the flames are from an old um, uh, Limax Christmas light model thing, which is quite a cool flame pit, but that will work really, really nicely on that. So I'm going to paint up all that wood uh, and then kind of like have it there and then I can have that on. Uh, and then the rest of the time when I don't want it on, and, you know, daytime and that kind of thing, I could just peel off the top and it'll look like that which is great so that will sit on the top of the lighthouse uh, and make it look like a lighthouse which is what it is we are very nearly finished the lighthouse I'm really really pleased getting there indeed okay so last few bits then what do we need to do now oh yeah scrubby bush plants so I'm using one of the TMP this is a raspberry bush um, I'm gonna make a tiny hole down here with a, a cocktail stick or the like and I'm going to uh, just glue that in using uh, white glue. Uh, we're going to have a couple of those around the base there. Um, and they'll look quite neat. Again, give some kind of like character and foliage and wild look to the base of the model. Then the uh, flock on the tiles. And uh, we're pretty much there. Done. Finished. There it is. One of those models that I reckon I could probably just keep adding details to. 
In fact, I'll be in real danger of just over detailing this model, but I'm really pleased. I don't know what the whimsy count got up to, but I think there's more whimsy in this than most of the other models I've made. Uh, I'm really pleased with it. It kind of like grew organically from ideas. F to be fair, it doesn't look anything, well, not really much like the, the original sketch. I'll remind you. But um, it's come out real good. Uh, multiple layers, uh, lots of platforms, which would give lots of opportunity for gameplay. Um, the building comes apart nicely um, in a couple of different sections. It will look great on the table. It gives um, plenty of height to the table. Let's see if I can find it. Here we go, got a tape measure. Um, <coughs> including the beacon now, it's... Uh, 20 inches tall, which is much bigger than anything else on the table, so it will really stand out, which is great. I mean, that will be a, a really cool thing. Um, it will be taller than ship's masts and that kind of stuff, so it's going to look really neat on the table. I can't wait to actually put it on the table and see what it looks like. Um, there's plenty of detail. Um, I'm going to bring the camera over here and we'll work our, our way down and see what we can see. I think you'll like it. I hope you like it. I hope it's like worth all of the, the kind of like the hype and the, the kind of uh, wait because it's now pretty much the end of April and um, this uh, uh, I started this in January and then it got shelved and now it's back and it's kind of done. So I hope you enjoy this. This is a good one for Ben Fiat. It's an interesting way to uh, extend that series of models in a very characterful and specific kind of way. Problem with that, of course, is it means it makes it more difficult to use uh, in other scenarios, but uh, you know, hey, what the heck, it's really cool. This would be a great location for the uh, Find the Witch um, scenario for a start, um, but there's loads of other stuff I could use it for. This one, actually, because of its size, but its base size, I'd happily have this one on a shelf uh, in my living room just to sit there and look at it. I mean, I'd, I'd have most of them on the shelf, to be honest, but my good lady probably wouldn't tolerate that. But this one, I'm really pleased with this. So, come over here, come, 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 and we'll have a look at some of this in detail. And then we'll put it on the table, and then if I can find it, I'll, I'll stick it on the, what's that called, the spinning Jenny, the lazy Susan, that's the one. Um, and we'll have a look from that point of view too. But uh, let's just come down here, check this out. Okay, starting at the top then, we've got my flickering beacon, which I'm really pleased with. Um, top platform, enough space up there, just about to get a large based figure. I don't know about a massive based figure, but 40 millimeter based figure. We'll go up here all right, just about. That's the Mayor of Benfliot. And his telescope going down then, removable ladder to the next platform. And then the platform on the roof. The roof is accessed, of course, through this door. Um, I'm assuming that the mayor just flies up to it and then they comes out, but others might climb up. And then, of course, we've got uh, the main room. Can we see in there? Which is hard to see in through, I suppose. But... Thank you, Chewy. This big window where the supplies come in. Of course, we can get a much better look in the main room if we take out this roof section. One LED light in there, which looks nice in the dark. And all that furniture is completely removable, doesn't need to be there at all. And there's a trapdoor down to the storeroom and the entrance down below. Storeroom down below, pretty simple. Again, with some removable details. One set of shelves there. This bit actually is not tall enough to get the puffy modelling because he holds his sword upright. Then down onto the island itself, which got finished off nicely with flock, glass water, a cleat here to tie your boat up to. <coughs> Manky chimney and the rest. All in all, I'm really pleased with this. I like the, the blue, silver, fish scale kind of uh, roof tiles. They all look manky and over, um, uh, well weathered, uh, all round. Yeah, it's nice. 
It looks good in the dark too, even with just two LEDs. Um, I'll tell you what, let's organise turning the light off and I'll show you. It's a bit of ambient light this evening, but there's my beacon. Shining brightly, ships into the Tomatoes. All the way down, there's the warm yellow lights of the living quarters. Let's go put it on the table. So there we go, that is my Burroughs and Badgers lighthouse build. I am very pleased with it indeed. It's going to be a nice addition to the table. Um, if you've enjoyed this build, then please do leave comments down below like you normally would. Um, you know, give the like thing, do the click subscribe thing, all that kind of stuff. Um, the increasing numbers of viewers on this channel is very satisfying. I'm glad people are out there and watching this stuff. If you're new to Burrows and Badgers, and this is the first B&B &B build you've seen, then um, do, really, really do consider getting into b and It's a game that you will absolutely love. You won't regret that choice at all. I'm always happy to extol the virtues of Burrows and Badgers. Well, I'm always happy to extol the virtues of Burrows and Badgers. I think it's an absolutely brilliant game. I've had more fun out of this in the last three years than I think uh, of any other game in the previous ten. Um, it's absolutely brilliant. The figure range is great. The rule system really, really works. Oh, you know, you've heard me say all this before. And if you haven't, then there it is. Check it all out at oswallminiatures.co.uk. Now, if you like what I do, as I've already said, you can click subscribe. Of course, you can also support this channel even more if you want by going over to Patreon at patreon.com slash worlds and you can become a patron. Um, it's the end of April. It's about time for another competition to see who wins the next bit of scenery that I make for you. If you don't, that's absolutely fine because all I'm really here is about making models for my hobby and hoping you enjoy that as we go along. Whichever way, thank you very much for viewing. Um, I hope you've enjoyed my latest Burrows and Badgers build. I will see you next time on Magrathea Builder Worlds. <laughs>